Once you learn your poology ABCs and 123s, it's time to learn to walk the walk, talk the talk, and eventually, if you get really good, you learn to run, like the French. The truth of the matter is, if you want to excel at this game, you really don't have time to do math in your head. So you need to hardwire the aiming fractions so you can just see them without thinking about it. This way you don't have to spend valuable time during a match doing math in your head. There are no great shortcuts when it comes to memorizing all the fractions you need to know to pocket balls. But if you stay tuned, I'll show you a fun way to go about it. Furthermore, I'll show you how to think about poology in a more holistic and efficient way to connect all the dots to put runouts together. Today I'm going to show you a drill for memorizing the fractional aiming points for the positional value 25 described in the Poology book. If you don't know what a positional value of 25 is, you need to read the book. In this video, I'm just going to focus on how to improve your pocketing percentages from the 25 yard line. If you recall from my ABC123 video, you can get all the fractional aiming points by dividing 25 by 8, which is the same as dividing 25 by 2 three times with a couple of rounding simplifications. Hopefully this is the last time you'll need to do this for any object ball that lies on the 25 yard line since the entire point of the video is to teach you how to memorize these values and how to teach yourself to see these fractions immediately without doing any math. If you zoom up on your pool table using Google Maps and ask Google to show you where the 25 yard line is, this is what it would look like. If your object ball is sitting anywhere on one of these lines and you intend to pocket the ball into one of the bottom pockets, then your object ball is sitting on the 25 yard line and all the math we just did applies to that object ball. Of course, if you're going for one of the top pockets, you need to make sure you tell Google that's the plan so it knows how to draw the lines for the other side of the table instead. Just like before, if your object ball is sitting anywhere on one of these lines and you intend to pocket the ball into one of the top pockets, then it's on the 25 yard line. And all the math we just did applies to that object ball as well. Next, I'm going to lay out all the aim lines for the 25 yard line you need to visualize. Like diamonds, these aim lines are the same on every pool table in the world. I prefer to think of them as breadcrumbs and not Bible verses. These markers will be the starting point you need to plan each shot before you take equipment, English, and deflection into account. And as I explained in the pool manifesto, if you miss a shot, they also serve as the breadcrumb reminder where you started so you can make adjustments to make it for the next time you face the same shot. In my mind, these numbers could just as easily be named using the Whiskey Tangle Foxtrot phonetic alphabet because when you adjust your aim for equipment and positional needs, you often end up aiming for a different fractional value than the baseline described in the book. So don't get fixated on the number itself. Use them as references for a rolling cue ball with no side spin, which come up all the time. I use them primarily for mapping and memorization purposes, and if you use the poology images from the book, they will definitely send the object ball towards your pocket. The art of pocketing balls at a high percentage rate requires you to constantly make slight adjustments from this baseline, which really is just a feeling, and the high value part of the aiming equation, which only comes from practice, table time, and dedication to the system. The most important thing is to create a unique picture in your head you can easily recall for each breadcrumb. The more balls you hit from each breadcrumb using a variety of tip positions, the clearer the picture becomes for that breadcrumb, and the easier it is to remember what you did to pocket a ball the last time you were on that breadcrumb. In the long run, it makes it a lot easier to adjust to that breadcrumb on a new table. If there is only one image I want you to take away from this video, this would be it. This is the 25 yard line you should visualize when you walk up to the table and see your ball sitting on the 25. This is what I mean by visualizing poology holistically, which simply means visualizing the shot as a whole. When you get good at this visualization, not only does it help you pocket the current ball, it helps you plan for your next ball at the same time. For example, if you know in advance you need to run the cue ball across the table after your next shot, you can focus on landing on the 2, 3, or 4 aim line because if you land on, say, the 6, 7, or 8, it makes it more difficult to run the cue ball very far. More on this in future videos, but you need to trust me when I say it's important when learning poology to burn these breadcrumbs in your memory for as many shots as your brain can handle because the numbers matter for strategy just as much as pocketing balls. 
It's time for you to decide how serious you are about integrating poology into your game because this is where the rubber meets the road and theory becomes reality. Boot camp starts right now and there's no turning back because once you go all in on this drill, you can't help but see poology every time you walk up to a table and get down on a cue ball. The drill is simple. There's only two rules to remember and you get both object ball and cue ball in hand on every shot. This is because I want you to start thinking of the cue ball and object ball as a single entity. The distance the object ball is from the pocket and where the line between the cue ball and the object ball crosses the diamonds is where you plan your initial aiming point. So start thinking of both of these variables as a single object and focus on creating a single picture in your head for that unique combination. You can use any cueing you want top spin, bottom spin, inside English, outside English, and even French, so they don't hate me. Making the object ball is the only thing that matters in this drill. You can only claim victory when you successfully pocket a ball from all 48 breadcrumbs without a single miss. To speed up the rate at which your brain absorbs the successful pictures you need to remember, it helps you to verbalize what zone and aim line you're standing on before each shot. In the event you miss a shot, it's important you immediately guess why you missed the shot and try it again after making the adjustments you think are needed to make it. After missing, you need to reset the drill count to zero and start a new run from that spot. But at the end of the day, if you can make all 48 shots in a row without missing, you will have a good feel for what the 25-yard line looks like inside your head. Now that you've completed the drill using your most confident stroke, you need to learn to adjust your aim when you have to vary your stroke speed for position or strategic reasons. So repeat the drill once using slow speed to make the object ball trickle over the edge, and once where the object ball slams in the back of the pocket. You might be surprised how much you have to adjust your aim on some of these breadcrumbs. For advanced positional play, you have to be all over the cue ball, which doesn't do you any good unless you still pocket the object ball at the same time. So you need to learn how to adjust your aim to accommodate an endless variety of tip positions. This is how you develop the art of aiming, since there's really no other way for you to complete this drill unless you have a good feel for how all sorts of variables change where you aim. Your brain is smart and won't let you fail, so listen to it. If you're missing it right, aim for the left, and if you miss it left, aim for the right. The idea is to develop a new variation of the baseline pictures you created to get through the drill the first time. You will find you can make similar adjustments for the same breadcrumbs on all the other yard lines. I can't stress enough the importance of knowing exactly where you are contacting cue ball when you do drills like this, especially when you are contacting cue ball away from the center line. You can learn to pocket balls all day long using right hand English and turn around and miss the same ball using what you think is the same amount of left hand English, and the only difference is where you are actually contacting the cue ball. They are both detrimental to your game in the long run. Learn to use misses to hone your aiming like sharpshooters adjusting their sights when tuning their guns for competition. Your right brain will learn to lock onto the correct aim point like radar locks onto a target. Without knowing what a miss feels like, you will never be able to enjoy the sensation of your internal radar locking onto an aim point with 100% certainty you can't miss the shot. If you completed this drill, you should never have to do math again for the 25-yard line as long as you live. If you end up on the 25-yard line in the future and forget which 1 through 8 aim line you're closest to, you need to repeat this drill as punishment. And speaking of punishment, we are just getting started. You should repeat this drill from the other yard lines so you'll never have to do math from anywhere on the table. If you finish this drill for all the yard lines shown here, and you still need to divide 57 by 8, you're probably on the wrong YouTube channel. For those of you that do complete the drill, I encourage you to post videos of you doing the drill and please add your comments. I'm particularly interested in which queuing breadcrumb combination requires you to aim most differently from the reference aim lines described in the book. Here you can see how I set up the drill on my table. I use reinforcement dots to mark the 25 yard line on the cloth. I use black dots for the corner pockets and yellow ones for the side pocket. I use golf tees for the 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21 breadcrumb markers to make them easier to see on camera, but the tees get in the way of the drill, so I would use coins or stickers on the rail instead since you can easily cue over them. In addition to the Google Map bird's eye view of the 25 yard line, you need to visualize the street view as well. You must know what challenges your soldiers are facing on the front lines to get them home safely. In particular, I want you to pay attention to how much of the pocket each object ball sees as we move along the 25-yard line. 
there's a direct correlation to the margin of error and your chances of successfully pocketing a ball. At the extreme limits of the 25 yard line, there's just enough room for the object ball to fit between the points of the pocket. As we move along the line parallel to the long rail, we find ourselves on the sweet spot for pocketing balls in the side pocket. The maximum room for error is when you're directly in front of the pocket, which gives you a full view of the pocket. If you fancy snooker, there's a reason I chose the blue tees for the side pocket. Anyway, as we work our way to the other end of the table, the margin for error reverses itself. At the point you turn the corner, you have about a half of a pocket to work with, and as we move back towards the long rail, the margin for error dwindles to the point you just barely have enough room to fit the object ball between the points. So in summary, the math, or aim lines, never change, and the poology numbers still work everywhere along the 25-yard line. But the margin for error is constantly changing, with the maximum room for error straight across from the side pocket, and zero room for error when the gap matches the width of the object ball. The same logic applies to the 25-yard line for the corner pocket. At the extremes, we have the least amount of pocket to work with, and we are on the line between the corner pocket and the side pocket. Your object ball can see the full pocket, and hence has the most room for error. All the aim lines and math still work anywhere along these lines, but remember to take the object ball margin for error into account when you aim and play shape, since your object ball has to live with this restriction. In conclusion, aiming pool balls is a witch's brew of variables, at best, and just like meatloaf, everybody seems to have their own recipe. I'm the first to admit poology is not the holy grail of aiming, but it most certainly gives you constants, which like diamonds, are the same on every table in the world. If you start thinking about poology holistically, these constants give you an increased sense of orientation on the table, drastically increase your odds of pocketing balls help you plan your runouts, and ultimately serve as a breadcrumb you can use to retrace your steps so you can analyze your misses and make adjustments to improve. I don't know any other aiming system that provides that much value. So good luck incorporating poology in your game. Hopefully it will give you the confidence knowing your game is built on a solid aiming foundation, which is the seed from which all great pool players grow. Hello everybody, this is Maddie and the Natty, and I want to thank you for watching. My COVID project has exceeded my expectations and somehow found its way out of Cincinnati. I even have a fan from overseas who likes my videos and says he really enjoys watching pool players do math in their head. He sent me this awesome hoodie. So thanks Jason from Scotland for the head start on my first sponsor. And if you stay tuned and you keep your feet on the ground and you keep reaching for the stars, someday maybe Jason, you'll find a pot that you can keep. Until next time. So long, everybody.